afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel. I'm your host of The Edge. You know what? We are, we're in a great, great part of the country. We're on the Fiesel farm on Donna Nail Lane. And it's always so good to be with you. I've got a very special friend with me right now. We're going to go ahead and start digging. And she is going to start having a regular segment on this show, Miranda Henry. And she is, I've learned so much from Miranda. You know how we, we, we make things, we do things, we're on a budget. You know, we have to in this economy. And Miranda has been my go-to source for a lot of things. Hey, Miranda, how are you doing? Hey, Donna, I'm doing good. How are you this morning? I'm doing pretty good. I love your background. I love the kitchen. Thank you. That's an, another budget-friendly project behind me. Oh, <laughs> From the military. Yeah. So, I mean, you put it together yourself? I did. Those little panels from Dollar Tree. There's like four sheets in them for a dollar or a dollar and a quarter now. But anyway, so I got enough to do my backsplash and I just love it. I just love it. So there's four panel. That is very cost effective. It is. And like all I did was take a um, like a pair of scissors and cut out my light socket because it's just uh, paper thin. But it doesn't look like it, you know, but no, I it just, looks like stone. This looks yeah. like tile. Yeah. I, I love it. I, love I it think too. I have five dollars in it, maybe. Wow. <laughs> I don't even well, think I have that many. So cool. I mean, that's all I can say is wow. And, and this is <laughs> this is my point. Have you ever looked at maybe shopping for a house or something? And you see the house is it, pretty, but it was decorated maybe in the 60s and and you know, maybe it's this weird funky looking pink tile. I mean, it's nice, it's tile. And everything but they use weird colors yeah and it's such nice stuff that you can't paint it i don't think and you're just kind of stuck with pink unless you redo the whole thing or maybe sometimes back in the day like in the 80s purple was popular and people had really really nice countertops to spend a lot of money for them but they were purple and you can purple? paint them <laughs> yeah countertop but you have found ways to go around all that yeah i have actually painting is one of the things that I do to go through some of that, make it look like, you know, granite, or if you wanted to do tile, you could paint it and, and put polyurethane over it, as long as it's oil based. That's that's the, the secret. So like these kits they sell at like Lowe's and Home Depot to do your countertops. Uh -huh. Well, those have water-based polyurethane in those, and you don't want to do that because water base and water mixes, and so it eventually fade chip and all that good stuff. But if you get oil base, we know oil and water doesn't mix. Mm -hmm. So it really acts like um, water rolling off of a duck's back. It just doesn't penetrate the, the counter. So if you put, you know, some good layers of polyurethane oil base on there, it'll last for years, years and years and years. I've done it so many times. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I did it. You know, my grandparents had, we bought the farm, my grandparents farm. So we're living on it right now. And so... You know, it was just, it was just old and it was white and it was just, it had been stained and, you know, and so instead of getting rid of the countertops, I did what you were talking about doing. And and, and people would walk in and go, oh, when did you get your new granite countertops? Yep. It looks <laughs> so, just like granite. Countertop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it does such a good makeover too. And it's such a friendly budget thing to do. Even now um, to buy everything for a pretty large kitchen wouldn't cost probably more than a hundred dollars. You know, it, it's, you can, you can totally make over your kitchen. And another thing that I did in, in a house that we had before this one is I painted all of the cabinets white and put brush nickel finish um, knobs on them and those turned out just gorgeous. I want to do it to this one, but you know, my husband's like, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. We, and I kind of, I copy Miranda on everything. So I did the same thing. I've had, they, they were old cabinets. My uncle Ernest had built these back in the sixties. And so Phil and I laugh about it. We'll say, you know, if a tornado comes through, the cabinets are still going to be up there. <laughs> they will blow the rest of the house away, but the cabinets will still be there. And so what we decided to do was paint them. And we did. What kind of tips, though, do you have for painting? So Because if you have an old house and, and you want to fix it up, or maybe you're just tired of it, you just want to do something different. What advice do you have for painting kitchen cabinets? 
Well, this may surprise you. Put, put your brush down because if you want to have a finished look, you don't want the brush strokes. So this is actually pretty easy. I went and got some Rust-Oleum primer and I just did what's called a tight coat. You just barely spray it on there just enough so the paint grabs to it, especially if you already have a type of finish. So you just dust it on there and then you dust a couple of more tight coats. So once you get it covered in primer, then you can take a high gloss if that's what you want to use or a semi gloss and then you just spray paint on. So it it's really pretty and it just it just it's so pretty. It's just solid white with the shiniest. I mean, you can just say the gloss when the light hits it. So and, it and it looks like, I mean, it's, it's a great look. See, we didn't do that. What we did is we found something and we thought we were taking off this top layer of varnish. And we got rid of a lot of it. And it kind of, it almost sanded it down, but it was this liquid product. I don't remember what it was called. So we did that, thought we had it right, painted it using the brush. Wish we hadn't done that. And it looks good for a good couple of years. And now with all the canning and the cooking and all that stuff I do, some of the handles, you can see the paint's coming off. Right. And that's why you want to use a high gloss because gloss seals it and it lasts longer and you can always wipe it off. It is so easy to keep gloss and anything like oil base clean. You can just use any kind of cleaner. I mean, literally any kind of cleaner and it'll just come clean. But if well, you what go, advice do you have for me if I redo this? What should I do? I, I really don't want to take the paint off and start all over again. But is there something yeah, I else? Wouldn't. Do? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You could leave if you wanted to. Now, I do recommend taking the hinges and stuff down. But, you, you know, take your knobs and stuff off and do just that. Get you a drop cloth and put your doors down. Do one side, just a, a small tight coat and just keep doing a tight coat until you've got it covered and then do your high gloss. And it'll last for years. That'll save it. Okay. Oh, yeah. It, it really will. I the only thing you might good. have to do every once in a while um, where we where we would grab the knobs, there there might be a little bit that you might have to touch up for the years, you know, but it uh -huh. will last a long time. Well, Phil is looking in here telling you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's a task taking all the knobs and everything off and then putting it Yeah. Back. Now, if you don't care what the inside looks like, and I didn't, I left mine up. No, I just I left took, mine up. No, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't. I thought, well, nobody's going to see the inside of them, you know. So I left those brown. And I did open the door and do the inside of the door, but not like the shelves or anything. So I left mine up on the hinges. I just took the knobs out and replaced those. So. Yeah. And it looked well, good. That's, I'm, that's, re I'm really happy with it. That's some great advice right there. Um, now, I know that you are a do-it-yourselfer. And I'm, I'm telling you what, in this economy, you'd better learn to be a do-it-yourselfer. That's right. That's right. It Little things like we had um, in, in our old house, we had a small shower unit. And those sh those at the time, those curved shower rods were like $80. We were like, we are not going to go spend eighty dollars on a curtain rod, you know. So we went to Lowe's and got a PVC pipe, a white one, painted it so it, you know, didn't have the the little writing on it, and hung that up with pipe fittings. So we had like three dollars in our curtain rod, and you couldn't tell it. And you kind of had this industrial look going on too, you know, which is a hot look. Yeah, yeah. Um, in our old house, yeah, I would. I love the designs that, that we did in that one. I just, I fell in love with the color scheme and, and everything. This one I, I haven't took off with yet. My, like I said, it's, my husband loves it, but you know, it's, it is a mess. And he works every day. So he's like, I don't want to come in and paint buckets be everywhere. <laughs> but he knows it's coming. <laughs> It'll be here. It sure will. Now, I know you got lots of great, great tips. And so let's say now you, but when I met you, you were living in a tiny house and you, you had a lot of shows. You have a YouTube channel. Let's talk about that just for a few minutes. And so that's how I got to know you. I saw you on YouTube. Yes, that's exactly how we met, which was so awesome. Um, but I just do DIYs on my channel and I try to do them all budget friendly. And I started out doing renovations and then when my renovations were all finished, 
I started doing home decorations. Mm -hmm. So I would go to Dollar Tree and get items and find ways to, you know, make cute little home decor items for everyone. And I just, I, I get comments on my videos, even my old ones. You know, I have a lady that messaged me yesterday. She's like, this may be an old video, but it's still very relevant. It was a candle opera I made. She's remaking it for a wedding. And so people still come to my channel and they just, they get some ideas and do different things. So I got into floral for a minute. So I, those little um, baskets at Dollar Tree, I took one of those and some Dollar Tree flowers and I took uh, some of the foam and I stuck the flowers in. Then I glued them down in that basket. So the basket was just full of flowers. And then I took a burlap ribbon and went around the side put some um oh uh, the rings help me out here um embroidery oh. rings oh, okay. and i made wheels out of those and then i made a little handle so it was a floral wagon and that was a big hit everyone copied that one <laughs> that's great i mean and these are so many things because flowers are just i mean when you got these humdrum winter months going on you need some flowers Oh yeah. Got to spruce it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. I know Christmas is over, but one of, one of the things, uh, my very first ones that I did that I I'm wanting to redo because it turned out so good is that, that garland, you know, at Dollar Tree, it's real thin, right? But if you get some of that and you braid it, you take, you just take three and you braid it just right, like a regular yeah, braid. Yeah. And then you take three of those and you braid those together and with a strand of lights, then you can put your balls and your pine cones and your ornaments and stuff on it and have the prettiest, like a centerfold piece of garland, like it come out of Better Homes and Garden. It's really, really pretty. Mm, yeah, I like that. And then you can get pine cones anywhere. I mean, you just oh, get yeah. them in the yard, whatever. Do you ever spray paint yours? I do. No, I'll, I'll dust them white and, you know, give it like a little snow effect. So, and I would go out in the woods and just pick the prettiest pine cones, the ones that, you know, oh. I like the most. And that's what I put on my garland. Now, how do you keep yourself organized? Because huh. I'm going to tell you what, you, if you're not <laughs> careful, like, I, you got to come over here and see my craft room sometime. It's, yeah. It's, and it's also my studio. So, I'm, I'm doing a two for one with the studio. Well, I'm I'm not the best with organizing, <laughs> but I I did buy a um a huge cubicle shelf and I, and I just got it, so I haven't got it put it together. And I'm going to start having labels on everything, and it's this will take up half the wall in my shed, so that's going to help because the back of my shed is just my craft stuff. So I got it. I know where it's at. <laughs> just about it just depends <laughs> could take me a minute to find it just depends but um well, organizing crafts is is a big is a big thing you really need to keep them organized if you can but you know we use them and put them back and <laughs> well then, then this is other. another thing like i know where it's at and then if i have to send phil to get something it's hard for me to explain to him where it's at and he'll say I'm not going in there. I'm afraid something will bite me. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a she shed? I do. I do. I love it. I love it. I'm so glad that we got, it's just for my crafts and just for my channel. So it you know, started out that way. Then I started using a little bit for storage, but yeah, for the most part, it's my crafts. Uh -huh. and, and you got to have a place. You got to be able to do that. Okay. Um, half the time is going already, Miranda. This happens all the time. So let's go ahead and get ready for a commercial break. And we're going to be right back in just a minute. I'll, I'll take you off um, temporarily. And then as soon as I come back in, I'll put you back in again. Okay. okay. All right. And, and I'm anxious to see what you think about these commercials. I did them myself. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. 
At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience Southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and my employees and I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support. With everything going on right now, your rest is so important. That's why we're having the biggest my pillow sale ever. Not only are my bed pillows as low as $19.98, but you can get the best body pillows ever. Regular $89.98, now only $29.98. Take your rest on the go with our Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows for only $14.98. And we have our new couch and accent pillows. They aren't just for looks. They have My Pillows patented adjustable fill that gives you that amazing My Pillow comfort. In this economy, you get the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code and you get deep discounts on body, couch, bolster pills, and so much more, including my original bed pills for as low as $19.98. Please order now while quantities last. At La Mon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of DeKalb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to lamonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. Twin City Used Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales look forward to serving you. And you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Fort Payne and Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by the locations in Fort Payne and Gadsden. We sincerely look forward to serving you. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of The Edge. You can find us on television a couple different ways. You can find us on Channel 182 on Charter Communications. You can also find us on Abundance TV, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. I have a very special guest with me right now, one of my dear friends. Her name is Miranda Henry. Um, Miranda, you're all over the world right now. Of course, you already were anyway with your <laughs> YouTube channel. But you know, people are listening, to, listening right now to two Southern gals talk about making stuff and about saving money while the economy is just like all out of sports right now what are you doing to help save money as far as grocery buying well one of the um things that i'm actually starting to look into because i've been going to the store and they have these different days like eight dollar day five dollar day doesn't matter what it is Mm-hmm. And um, what I'm figuring out, they're buying pallets, like return pallets, and and it's all good stuff. It's all end date stuff, but you never know what you're going to get. And the the pallets are, you know, I think mostly from Amazon, but you would be surprised what is on there. So one of the things that I found is, um, and this is just for like uh, an emergency thing, but a can of um, fried. Uh, freeze-dried 
sausage crumbles. It's got a 25 year shelf life. It retails for $70 and I paid $2 for it. So there's little too. things. Yeah. Yeah. And these stores, I don't know if, if you're familiar with them, they're called bargain bins. And they have some, well, they had one in Arab, but they recently closed. But anyway, so like I said, they get these new shipments in and you go in there and it doesn't matter what it is. It can be um, like one of those vacuum cleaners. It's like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. The little robot, but it's eight dollars. It doesn't matter what it is. It's eight dollars. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, whatever they didn't sell is six and so on. So I've actually been having a hobby doing that. I've really, really enjoyed that. And I'm kind of looking at them like, I kind of want to get my own palette because this one store <clears throat> it that, like I said, they just do food. They just do food and they get the best stuff. Those fair filled uh, protein shakes. They're two for eight at Publix. I got a case of them, a case of them for like $2. Oh, wow. Now, where's this one at? This one is um, in Garden City. And toward, I, <laughs> I love this store so much. It's like it's like going toward um, Hansville. Oh, it's okay. going toward Hansville. Yeah, I'm writing it down. Um, because the one I go to, I go a lot of times when it's on fifty cent day. And yes. I, I mean, yes. I got they had green screens that you can use for your business on fifty Ring cent lots day. On fifty, 50 cent, cent day. day. Not a thing wrong with it. So, like, if I'm taking, I'm going on tour, I'm, I'm going somewhere, whatever, I've got, I just keep one in the back of the car. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you have one I'm on the go extra, now. I went on there and bought four of them. I mean, so I'm you know what I'm right. talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I love this place. I have, and I love flavored teas, herbal teas and stuff like that. One day on $1 day, I found some herbal tea and it was like, oh, gosh, I think it was like 16 packs in a box that, mm -hmm. I mean, I got, and, and it had an, like a, it was not a bad expiration date or anything on it either. And, but yeah, I just, they like, don't put anything out that has a bad expiration date. They, the one I'm talking about, they, they will not put it out. Now there's another one um, in Scottsboro called the banana box. Now they don't do like certain days, but they do have really, they're like a kind of like a bent dent, but um they have really, really good prices. So sometimes, and, and they'll get fresh meat in, fresh steak, fresh pork, fresh sausage. And the prices will make you think that we're living in the good days <laughs> of the economy. I know. Really see, good. and this economy really hasn't, hasn't hurt us because that's what I do. I go out and I look for bargains. Plus, we have a garden every year. So I have a new one. I'm going to do some segments on it. And I'd like for you to come over here to the studio sometime when we do this. And okay. so I'm planting. I, I've been, I'm a seed keeper. And so I wanted to ask you a question. I think I know what your answer is going to be. So if someone presented you with a block of gold or, or say a bunch of seeds, which one would you take, the gold or the seeds? Well, the seeds will continuously feed you. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you you'll, that. that's, that's my, yeah. answer. my whole thing is if I own a block of gold and the economy gets really bad and I want a loaf of bread, I would have to give that person the entire block of gold because I, I mean, you can't break it down and, you know, give them chunks of it. Right. You know I mean? right. So, so, but seeds are forever. And if you'll, and I'll give you an idea. They said it couldn't be done, but I did it last year. I do these, I'm just like you. I do these little projects just to see if it's going to work. So I love yellow tomatoes. Yellow tomatoes, orange tomatoes, those are the best ones to me. They're the more meaty one. And I love banana sandwiches with a big slap of mayonnaise on it and mustard and hot sauce and pepper. I pepper it down. On so, your banana sandwich? Uh, no, not banana, tomato sandwich. Tomato, okay, okay. Well, I, I, well, you I'm said tomatoes to start with, and then and then you said uh, I like a banana sandwich with man with mayonnaise on it, and I was like, well, okay. No, no, it's tomato. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I did because I couldn't find any, I couldn't find any of the yellow or orange seeds, um, tomato seeds today, not banana seeds, tomato. And so <laughs> what I did is I got one of my tomatoes because I found went on and bought the plant like two years ago. So I bought the plant and then I kept the seeds to it. And somebody had said, well, you're not going to be able to germinate seeds if you buy it from 
like a Lowe's or something like that. But I did. It actually happened. Yeah. So I saved them. Now, I don't know how many years I'm going to get out of this, but I saved all the seeds. And we had some awesome to yellow tomatoes last year. Good, good, oh, good, good. good. Sandwiches. And I make salsa and stuff out of them, too. So did you put them in a little starter tray? Where you put your seeds in a little starter tray or did you just start them out in a big? <clears throat> no, I just put them on a paper towel and let them dry really good. And then I, I wrapped them up. I took them. I took all the dirty stuff out, like all that gel stuff that's in between mm -hmm. the seeds, took all that out. And then I put it on another paper towel, put it in a nice Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. You need to keep them in the okay. freezer. Then what I did, I got them out and I'm about to do it again because I'm going to do this hydrophonics system. And this is where you get seeds and you sprout them in water. And you can actually grow in the wintertime. You can actually grow lettuce. Lettuce is ungodly, the price of it. You sure and can. So you can, so so I can grow lettuce all year long. This just got it in. I'm like a little kid when stuff like that comes in. Phil could say I'm buying you a diamond ring that wouldn't make that much thrill for me. Is it having I'm, this? I, I just love doing this. So anyway, yeah. this is my new little thing I'm going to work on, and you and I need to do this together. I'll give you some plants off of it, and so you just put the seed in these little. And by the way, I found this. It's it's like these little pods that you can get and it costs about $20 on Amazon. I got it on 50 cent day and there's hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's hundreds of them and you can actually cut them in half. So what you do is you put the seed in it. You need to saturate these little pods with water mm -hmm. and then you put the seed in it and then you just place it in this little thing. It's made and you could probably make one of these. It's um, made of PVC pipes and it has holes in it. Okay. And then Phil's going to put a pump in it, and then it's going to be constantly recycling water. And so the roots out of these are incredible. Um, that then, is so awesome. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to do this. And this is something you can do if you live in an apartment. As, as long as you've got a window that's south facing where you're getting that morning sun, um, even in the wintertime, I mean, you've got food and you don't have to worry about paying these ungodly overprices. We've got just about a little bit less than a minute left in this segment. So, Miranda, tell the folks how they can find more information about you. And um, we're going to have these regular segments. OK, um, yeah, I'm just on YouTube. You can go to Creative Living Lifestyles or you just type up Creative Living. You'll see me. It's a black and white icon um, that is me. And you click on there. You can find tons of DIYs to keep you busy for days and days and days <laughs> so yeah check me out on youtube you know something you had one one time i saw and now you have beauty tips and this is a beauty tip that i got from you and it was about mascara and you know how you'll buy mascara and you'll just it may say volumizing or it may say whatever and people think i have false eyelashes on and i don't it's oh wow it's different and i got it from you and it was different ideas using different kinds of mascaras at the same time yeah it's, it's the different it brushes yeah the different brushes do different things so i, I would dip one brush and and put my mascara on and then go to a different brush with maybe a little angle maybe it was a little fluffier and it just wipes on there different with the different brushes so you can really make it look like you do have thoughts like eyelashes on it's your eyelashes Absolutely. so yeah that's another that's another one on there. I forgot that's about that one. Look at you. <laughs> all the time. That's another Miranda tip. So go on ahead and get some tips from her. But Miranda is going to have a regular segment with us. And we're going to work that out. And then I'm going to let you know when it happens. Miranda, we got to go. Ten seconds. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I know you got a rescue animal. We're going to talk about that next time. That's right. I'm, I've been doing a lot of rescuing lately. Absolutely. Thank you, Donna. You, you have a good day. You too. And thank you for watching. You are the apple of my eyeball. Thank you, Miranda. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.